So from there, we have a displace. So this displace is being displaced with a rectangle mask. Welcome to learning MoGraph for Fusion. Let's get started. So I've been MIA for a couple of, uh, I don't know, it's been a while. Thanks to the wonderful folks at LumaForge for putting on the Faster Together stage. Highly recommend you guys check that out. But thanks to everyone who has continued watching my videos, continued subscribing. Hopefully we'll get back on the track and do a bunch more. So what have I been up to? Well, work. Work has taken over everything. That's a good thing. Um, but in the meantime, NAB 2018 just happened. It has been exciting. And I had an amazing opportunity to um, demo the new Resolve 15 at the Black Magic booth. Some of you were able to come out and say hi and take a look. Go to the Black Magic YouTube um, page and you can see the what's new and you might even recognize the voice on there. Okay, so <clears throat> big news is Fusion inside of Resolve. I couldn't believe it, but I've been playing with it and it's pretty amazing. Now it's definitely still a beta. So there's gonna be some quirks, there's gonna be bugs, there's gonna be crashes, but there's also gonna be just some amazing mind blowing. I can't believe this is happening. There's been several introductory videos already for Fusion inside of Resolve. So I don't wanna do an exact introduction. I just kinda of wanna show what is possible. Um, I just quickly went and made this little uh, promo. Now, as you can see here, I had to render out the video and put it back on top to play it back. I'm on a trash can uh, 2013 Mac Pro with 16 gig of RAM. I know, I know, it, that, that's gonna change soon. And um, for Resolve 14, it actually works just fine. I can edit in it. But for some reason, this public beta is not doing so well on this Mac. But uh, I know that Team BMD are on it. They'll fix it. In, in contrast, on my 2015 MacBook Pro with 16 gig of RAM as well, the beta works just fine. You know, nothing feels sticky or anything like that. So I just know it, that it, this is, again, it's a public beta. So there's going to be some, some issues, especially since it's, you know, one week away from NAB. Anywho, so I just made this little intro or whatever. I'm not sure what this is, but just kind of put some things together just to show you different ways that you can work with Fusion. I'm really, really excited about it. And uh, I can't wait to explore more and see new ways of interacting and working with it and, and start to really battle test it. That's what I'm curious. Um, so let's just dive right in and see what we can do. Okay, so let's first watch this video. All right, so there you go. Pretty abrupt, pretty fast, but there's some interesting things that you can do in there. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first of all, we have this first video clip here, the calling. So what I've noticed is that, you know, it's really amazing that you can just jump between an application, but really it's the equivalent of marking in and out on a timeline, uh, depending if you need one clip or five clips or several clips, exporting that clip, and then opening it up in your application of choice to add your special titles or whatever it is that you need, designing it, rendering it, closing out the application, or if you have dynamic link or something like that, closing the application and then jumping back into your NLE, just that click back and forth here is just amazing. The power that it provides and you're in all that stuff just happened with the click of a button. It's going to save so, so much time that uh, I hope that everybody can recognize that and see what, you know, see what the power that provides. All right, so uh, I'm not gonna do really intro to nodes or anything like that. The first thing that I wanna call your attention to is the, um, the flow. The, and I don't mean this flow up here, I mean the process. So we were in editorial. If you notice that, that between editorial and fusion, that this color is different. So what has happened? Well, I did some editorial, I did my title design, and then in color, I added just a couple of nodes. So that's pretty much the process. Fusion happens pre-color. So anything that you do happens before color and color gets applied 
over the titles and everything, which depending on what you're doing could be a good thing. In this case, for this title, it worked out fine. I liked how all of this kind of blended together nicely. So <clears throat> just a side note there, uh, we have our text and we have our text put into a transform. It's got a glow and there's a blur and that's merged on top. We have a defocus as well. That's kind of giving us our nice little bokeh there. Okay. Uh, we have another, let's see here. We have our little ellipse, pump that into background, add some blur, some glow, some glow. And then we merge that. We use this little rectangle here. Okay, so all the keyboard shortcuts work the same. Um, there's no there's no visual display up here, but it's Command K and that will bring you the on-screen controls. I had them turned off, so I use this rectangle to um, to, to act as a mat. So as you can see there, that rectangle is just expanding out, and that's bringing out. Let's bring in our little, our little beam there, as you can see. And that's pretty much it. Give it a transform. This transform is just uh, growing, as you can see here. So just kind of giving it a nice little movement. We're ready to go to the next clip. Now, in Fusion, excuse me, in Resolve, that's, that's going to be difficult going back and forth. Uh, but in Resolve, there's a couple ways to move between clips. Obviously, you can go back to the edit page. But if you have your clips open, here's all the the, the clips that are inside of your timeline, you can quickly just bounce back and forth between each clip. And let me close the clips down. I did a little displacement, right? So here's our media in with our other media in. Now this is a fusion clip. Now I'm just gonna jump back to the edit page. And you can see here we have this fusion clip. So what does that mean? Well, basically what it means is that I initially had two clips in the timeline. I had them overlap, overlap each other. I selected them both. I right clicked and I said, make a new fusion clip. And what that does is it takes these two clips just as they are in time, puts them into a compound clip and then loads them into fusion for you in time, timed out perfectly. So let's jump back into that. So here we go. Here's our clip B. And here's our clip A right there. So went ahead and brought these two pieces of media in, merged them. So what do we have going on here? Well, we have some displacement, as you can see here in our media out node. Just doing a quick little displacement, two displacements actually, just to kind of give it that nice little fast transition. So we have our first displace that's basically happening with a rectangle. And that's just popping in. You can see it happening over here. And then it just pops out. I mean, definitely get more sophisticated with it, but very simple. And the same thing for our main displacement. We have this background that's just getting just animating the color parameters to kind of give this bulgingness that's happening. We added a transform just to give it a little bit of scale to help push it up. And then finally we added a chromatic aberration just to kind of give this nice cool effect on our edges. And that's it. So real quick, just to go back to this, let's step back into our fusion clip, open in timeline and on this clip here, I've actually nested two fusion clips. So I'm not sure if you saw that, but here's a little icon for the fusion. So this actually has an interesting effect on it as well. So yes, you can add a clip to the timeline, do some effects and some compositing, even color, and then you can actually compound clip that back in and put more effects and more color on that. So here's the original file. And then we added I delayed the time and added that back on top of itself. And then the same thing again, just to kind of give this little delayed look, gave it some heavy, heavy sharpening, some chromatic aberration, and they went back to the timeline. And you can see I've added some color 
So let's jump to the color real quick. So we just have some balance and grades and some curves and then added some glow on there just kind of give this cool glow. And then overlaid this on top of this other clip so we can make this cool transition. So it is possible to do some compositing, some visual effects, and then I guess pre-compose it if you will and do more on top of that. And then the next step is, remember we talked about this first clip clip here where we created our title and baked it onto the actual uh, media file, then did our color work on top of all this. So here's the original. And then with the color on top of that, it's affected our title, uh, just everything, which is fine. But in this case, I didn't want my color to affect my titles. Um, it's, it would start to blow out my titles. So what I did was I actually put all of my title effects on top in a separate compound clip. So let's step into that. So here we go. Here's all my titles. Now this is just a compound clip of a JPEG, a black frame JPEG that I put into a compound clip and I'm using a brightness contrast node, setting my alpha, bringing the gain down. That will give us the transparency. If I had to turn this off, now this would be over black. So turn this back on, this, would, this is what gives us our transparency. So we have our text. Let's set our render range. So if you hold the command key down, I believe the control key on the PC, you can just click and drag, and set your render range. So we have this kind of flickering effect happening. So how do we do this? First, let me go over here and click our underlay so we can just see this on black. That'll be much better. All right, so we're just viewing the text node. As you can see, just the text node. So what did we do? Well, in the shading tab, if you go over here to the softness, I've put a perturb effect or a shake effect, basically the equivalent of a wiggle onto the softness X, which is giving it this blur effect. So right inside the text node, um, a, lot of, a lot of crazy powerful options that you can use. And that's right here. And I'm just controlling it with these parameters right here. So from there, we have a displace. So this displace is being di displaced with a rectangle mask. And the rectangle mask the center is the same thing. It's being just, it's being moved around with this perturb, All right? So let's come over here and turn off the on-screen controls. There we go. And then we have a glow. So the glow is only affecting the area that is displaced. And we achieve that by the same process of using this rectangle on the glow mask. So again, one, one mask is being used, one set of animation keyframes being used multiple times very, very quickly. So no need for pre-composing. And then we merge that on top of the background, which is again, transparent. Uh, and then, so we take the same text as well again and feed it to another displace. and changing some displaced parameters around. We get that look. Again, using the same rectangle. Dropping this into a filter. And then brightness contrast. And then merge on top. Very, very powerful, quick way of working. Um, and as you can see, just right inside the edit page, jump over to Fusion, make your titles. you have a nice cool little title. So use this compound clip as my title generator to put over this clip. Okay, so just let's finish this up real quick with just a couple of little things that maybe you're not sure uh, if you're coming from Fusion where those tools or buttons or features are at. Um, if you right click in your play bar area, you can turn on and off your high quality, your motion blur, proxy mode, auto proxy, all the stuff that you had at the bottom here in Fusion, it's right here in this gray bar. 
Also, if you want to control the proxy mode, if you're used to working in proxy, sometimes you need to jump into proxy, you can right click on the on the left side timeline bar and there's the controls for your proxy. So you can jump down to for proxy or whatever you want to do. So it's only on this left side at the zero if you right if you right click there. If you need to change some settings for Fusion for this comp, you can double click right here. Double click on that and that'll bring up your Fusion settings. So you can start to really go back and tweak just like you could in regular Fusion. Or you can come up here to the Fusion on the menu bar and you can say settings as well. Same thing. So uh, as you saw here, you can also reset the composition. Just brings it back to square zero, which will just be a media in and a media out node. Now, another way that you can reset your comp is through the clips. So inside the clips, let's say for example that I liked my composition, maybe I wanna try something different or client has changes, whatever. You can right click and say, create new composition or reset current. But this is a great way of versioning your comp. So create new composition, it will create an exact composition in version two for you. And at any point in time, you can jump between the two. So go back to composition one, hit load, or whatever you want to do. But there it is right there, reset current composition for you. So let's turn this off. Also, the effects library has the templates, which is, was the equivalent of the bin in Fusion. So all those uh, other features that were in the bin is right here. In my case, I like to use the chromatic aberration, so I'm glad that that's back in. And lastly, if you come over here to your cache readout, your RAM readout, you can right click on that and you can see a purge cache, just like you could in the previous version in standalone Fusion. So that's it. I hope that uh, that quick little layout makes sense that you can have several ways of getting into Fusion just by having a single clip, um, by using a compound clip to add a title over existing footage. And you can even use a Fusion clip twice on the same clip. So multiple opportunities to nest. That is it. It was great to meet everyone, had a blast, and look forward to many, many more. Thanks again. I'm going to say goodbye now. Goodbye. But come back and subscribe or something. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we learned something. So take what you learned and make it better.